Do you know how to launch your digital product? More specifically, the formats that are out there. I'm gonna bring you two formats today. Evergreen and then pick launches. I'm gonna leave a recurring product out of the mix today because it's a bit more complicated. I usually don't recommend people to start with a recurring model. That's something else for another video. Another video to explore this topic. Today specifically, I want to talk about peak launches, which we just call them launches, and perpetual evergreen. I call them perpetual. Where I learn them from, we call it that way. Perpetual is nothing more than leaving your products out there but let's take a few if you're going to sell a service online or not actually if you're going to sell a service or a product digital physical you need a certain sequence of actions to put that product out there think apple launching an iphone every year that's the most classical example people use right People are aware of the event WWDC that happens twice a year, if I'm not mistaken, where they announce the new software and then where they announce the new hardware. During that, and that actually what I'm about to say works for both types. I'm not going to give you a full strategy. I'm going to give you an overview. Okay, this is not a step-by-step -step strategy this is an overview so you understand what they are and you can if you have a little bit of marketing knowledge you're gonna be able to pick up what I'm putting out okay the WWDC the event of the launch is nothing but an announcement of the day that their cart opens that's a term we use a lot so do remember it. They have to announce that product somehow and everyone knows, we are trained to know that every year we're gonna have a new iPhone. We expect people create theories and they, you know, they are trying to, they create rumors, they're trying to predict what's gonna happen, they're trying to predict what's gonna come and that's to build anticipation that's an anticipation strategy that is a very the model of the anticipation strategy is very specific to apple for us with digital products or services sold online we have to build our own anticipation strategy we don't have people to do that for us I do have my theories that Apple kind of leaks a few things here and there because it's interesting. But I don't know. I'm not affirming anything for the love of God. It's just a hunch. Okay. But we have to build our anticipation strategy. And that works for both models of the all. And when you're talking about launching anything, you need to have a pre pre launch and a pre launch phases that will tell people something is coming so for digital products we have a sequence of actions it's always a sequence of something that will build for the pre-print launch that will for example align people's curiosity or spark people's curiosity and align people's minds with what's coming so you're gonna find out what are you struggling with? Because you also want to build a product that is relevant. So the pre-pre-launch is when you, when you are hearing, you are putting your knowledge out there, you are aligning your content to what people want and what they need, what they are objecting, what they are struggling with, with the format and the product you're going to create. And that happens on the pre-pre-launch. So, but you have to announce things somehow and then you have pre-launch strategies, which would be the equivalent of the WWDC that at the end they announce when the product is going to be available and they create this sequence 
of again mental triggers it's curiosity they they are very good at innovation so novelty is a mental trigger that is very hard to tap in you really have to be apple size to be that innovative i think i have something look at it this has become very meta now i do think i have a very innovative product coming along because i haven't seen this anywhere else and you're not gonna find it in in the internet i show it a little bit on that video that has become the one video that i mention in every video so it's gonna be linked here somewhere i explain i give, I give it a little tease of it of what's coming but novelty is a mental trigger that is really tough so you build anticipation you build curiosity you build social proof you build reciprocity on a pre-pre-launch you start a lot with reciprocity and a few other mental triggers that i'm not gonna go into and then you have a launch day and you launch that now for a peak launch you have seven days that people can buy your product that's why it's called a peak so you have also scarcity and urgency involved in that peak launch now i'm just going to compare that i have my notes here but i'm doing everything by heart <laughs> i just know this so like wholeheartedly that i don't think i even need my notes i'm gonna leave them here leave them here you know you have the possibility to create the scarcity and the urgency, you know, the cart is closing in one hour. It's a sequence of emails you sent. It's a sequence of contact that you send to your lead, to your email list, your leads. So you build your list on your pre-pre-launch so that when you start your pre-launch, you have people watching, right? It's like Apple announces it but people already know it's coming. So that pre pre launch, the anticipation is natural with Apple in a way at this point. People have been trained to it. It's really nice to train people when you are launching a very exclusive mentoring group mentoring that only a few, you know, there is a limited amount of people that can join. Usually the software actually gives you that limit. So Zoom whereby they give you that limit so that you create a peak in revenue there is a book called lunch by jeff walker that was just recently updated as well that you should read to understand a little bit of the mechanics of it but there are other strategies than the one listed in there people are already trained with that sort of launch method and so we can get creative to create new things one of my mentees, I'm not going to mention him here, but specifically, he, we've created a completely different pre-launch strategy for him. It's completely new because he has a very strong brand universe. And we found a format of a pre-launch that isn't an event, like Apple does a physical event that is live streamed. When you are selling digital products, you might do a sequence of lessons or maybe a challenge week where people do get results. It's important that if you're selling a transformative product, like a digital product, people need to get some kind of result out of it because you don't want to waste people's time. And you want to show that there is more that they can get once they join your product because, you know, you deserve that. You have the merit of the work you've spent i don't know how long how many hours i've spent a decade to get where i am to collect all the information to create my methods to think about strategies working with clients yada 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 you deserve that okay if you're teaching people you deserve to be honored your work needs to be honored anyway then the other alternative is to create an event and leave the product to be bought at any time and usually those products that you leave running in the perpetually 
are lower ticket, are of a lower ticket, because then you are going for volume and they are at the top of the funnel, of your product funnel. Go back to that video so you understand what I'm talking about. That first video is foundational for you to understand all of this, okay? So the perpetual launch will give you the volume Will help you bring you will help bring you new people into your funnel, into your Instagram, into your email list, whatever your strategy is gonna be. And you need to remember that certain products, my camera is shaking. Certain products they are more strategic in terms of they are more strategic in terms of what they do in your funnel. Some of them are for cash flow. Some of them are going to be more for strategic purposes to advance your student into your next level, into their next level. I'm not going to go too deep into this. So what's really the best one, right? Well, if you're doing a peak launch, you're going to have a lot more work. It's a lot more stressful. It's a much bigger structure, even though it might not seem because it's a shorter time, but it's a much bigger structure than your recurring. The recurring does require, the, recur the recurring, the perpetual requires certain extended care, right? You have, if you're running ads, you're gonna have to check those ads. If you are, um, you're going to have to improve, improve the product, improve the, you are going to have to improve the product as well, which in a peak launch, you will improve that product for the next class, for the next time you launch it. You're going to launch it three to four times. In terms of strategy, right, in cost structure for your business, there isn't a better or a worse one. If you're willing to take on the challenge of doing live streams, of going out there and putting your, your ideas in front of people, then you can start with a launch, a regular launch. But if that's not for you, you can do a different type of strategy. I'm not going to discuss the strategies here and go with a perpetual. Ideally, you have a both. Ideally, you have a high ticket, your power offer that is evergreen, you know, your service, your mentoring, something high ticket, as well as doing your launches every three to four months. So there isn't a better one. There is a more intense one and there is a less intense one. One becomes sort of a routine perpetual and the other one becomes a challenge if you are strategizing your cost structure right now your product belt your product ladder however you want to call it if you're thinking about your little boxes of offer where people are going to go from basic to intermediary to advanced you need to figure out which products you're going to do a more intense approach probably your high tickets something around 1k mid mid high that you're gonna launch periodically and then those there are even your recurrence your your memberships if you do memberships if you do recurring then those are also gonna be perpetual you i want you to think now if you don't have that structure from the first video lay down in front of you right now go back watch it think of a few products and think which ones you think 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 figure out which ones need to be available for your client at all times at all times for example recurring for apple would be icloud storage that's something that is recurring, that is always available, people can purchase at any time. 
iPhones eventually get updated, they get old, they get discontinued. So they are more towards, it's a kind of a weird one because it's a physical product. And, and then start observing as well around you how people are launching those products, how people are offering those products. Once a student is in your course that you launched and you had the launch for a week, once you have the student, that person needs to have a limited time to go through your course. I have, this is kind of like a bonus now. I like to have longer videos. I think it delivers more. I've made this mistake where I left, I left it open for too long. I had, people had infinite access to the content. And what happens is that it eliminates the urgency to go through the content. It eliminates the action. People are bad at buying something and then actually using it, which is crazy. They will pay money for a course that they want that will solve their issue. There's kind of like, maybe it's a big issue in their lives and they still don't go through it. They'll pay for a membership and they're not gonna go through the content. It is insane to me. Creating those scarcities, those urgencies, and that sort of availability, limiting their availability, increasing the contact that people have with you do after the sale, okay, in both cases, will help people stick, as well as help you sell more of your product belt, okay? Keep an eye out because I'm writing the ebook, finalizing the ebook for the infinite product method that I'm gonna teach you to build that selection of offers divided by basic intermediary intermediary and advanced products for your customers. Perfect for anyone who is willing to create a hybrid business or you wanna offer your service or your physical product paired with digital products because you wanna raise the amount of revenue or the LTV, the lifetime value, the average ticket the person spends with you in a life, lifetime. Perfect for those that wanna work solely online like I do. I do offer services, but they are digital services. They are offered virtually, like the mentoring. No limits in industries. Some industries you will need to circumvent. If you wanna know if your industry can take advantage of the method, comment in here message me on Instagram, reach out to me somehow, and I will answer you that question. Any other question that you have about the method, the infinite product method, don't hesitate, come talk to me. I am reachable, completely reachable, especially on Instagram, go there. The link is in the description. I'm glad to help, okay? Like and subscribe and Goodbye.